I think the the criticism of Francisco Lindor is doing more harm than it is good. It has been since day one. He basically admitted that. Lindor's worked himself through that. Should have become an all-star the last two years, putting up big numbers. The numbers are there consistently, 30, 30 year last year, whatever it may be. He's starting to get back to what he was in Cleveland. I said uh, you know, on record the other day when you were not here, BT, that I think Lindor's not having fun. Mm-hmm. And I think that's in part because fans get on him and people are criticizing him. I, it's got to stop with Lindor. The Mets have a lot of problems. Lindor, to me, would be the least of their issues. Contract, he's never going to live up to that. It's ridiculous, especially in today's market. But that's not what it's about. He is a great baseball player who plays every single day, plays great defense, could put the bat on the ball, hit for a decent average, hit with some power, steal some bases. He's the New York Mets' best player. Slow starts aside, let's get off of Francisco Lindor's back. You said a lot there. Uh, the thing that jumped out to me the most, and, and, and I would agree with this part, and I wrote it down to make sure to misquote you. It has to stop with Lindor. You're right. It does have to stop with Lindor. These horrible starts where the Mets are languishing, you know, in the basement or close to already, uh, those need to end. And it's the same stuff with Lindor every year. Listen, I, I also do agree with some of the other stuff, too. He is a good ball player. This is not about, you know, just taking a target and just firing away recklessly or being unfair. But, Sal, it's no different, like, when Randall is is a no-show in the playoffs or A-Rod back in the day or, you know, in, in the World Series or in, in, in the playoffs as right. well. Dave Winfield in the World Series back in 81. You know, and any any star that's here, particularly the one that is imported from a different team, given a lot of money to come here, I think that we usually boil it down to, to two very simple things as we evaluate those players, no matter who they are. Number one... Did you do you produce? And number two, do you win? And, and I hear you largely with Lindor, but I'm sorry, he ain't producing enough, and he's not winning enough. Right, but this year it's been four games, and in past years it's been a slow start. I understand that. However, why is he getting more criticism than anybody else? Nobody picks on Pete. Oh, he's God. the highest paid guy on the team. Whether that's right or wrong, but he's that's the, best the deal. He's the best player I, on the I, team. But, but you're answering your own question. Why is he getting picked on the most? Because he's the well, best player and he's making the biggest money. Well, he's got the biggest contract. Yeah, but, but Mets fans love Alonzo blindly, even with last season. And by the way, like I love Alonzo too and understand what he brings to the table. He is not the player that Francisco Lindor is. Jeff McNeil isn't a a stain on Lindor's shoe as far as a baseball player. <laughs> I didn't know where you go with that. No, no, well, I'm just, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you cleaned up a little <laughs> I bit. Know. You never know where the mind's going to take you. Yes, you go through yes, the filter, yes. you end up with that. Jeff McNeil couldn't hold a candle to Francisco Lindor as an all-around baseball player. And I bet you part of the problem, and we talked about this a little bit, since their fight, the squirrel, the rat and the raccoon, whatever <laughs> it may be, Lindor's probably like, geez, like this guy... Come on. He couldn't hold a candle to me as a player, yet the Mets fans love Jeff McNeil and rip Francisco Lindor. I understand the contract, and I'm not going to disagree that he should be held to a higher standard. Mm-hmm. He should. However, he posts. He plays every day, puts up numbers consistently. McNeil doesn't do that. Alonzo hasn't even done that with the average recently. Alonzo's not a good defensive player. Now, again, I'm not trying to pick on the other guys, uh-huh. but it seems like this, this – the, the disrespect – an underappreciation for Francisco Andor. This season, even aside, it's been four freaking games. Now, for the Mets, I don't believe in the Mets as a team, but to pick on Lindor after just four games is ridiculous. Well, I mean, listen, there's other culprits. N- Nimmo's sitting, what, 063, right. and McNeil's been a complete stiff. Bader's done nothing yet. They've got 25 hits as a team in four games with an OPS of 550. Mm-hmm. Combined on the average, there's nine position. I know it's only four games, but just to really let you know how bad it's been, there's nine position players with negative wars right now on the New York Mets. So, I, I listen. Does Lindor occasionally get the short end of the stick? You know, as as I say it out loud, but my answer is still no. Tough. Get over it, Lindor. If Lindor's too sensitive, if Lindor's not happy, then Lindor can ask for a trade. Or he can start producing like, you know, his contract says he's supposed to. I understand the McNeil stuff. People stick up for him and pizza, you know, the uh, the big goofy goofball who hits 50 bombs that everybody loves. But I can promise you, Sal, if he is still a Met next year, I don't think he's going to be. Who? Pete? Pete. Yeah. But if he is... And he gets a massive deal. The the level of criticism will change because right now, 
I, I mean, he's passed a cute little story. He's a stud in terms of being a home run hitter. But he was drafted by the Mets. He was developed by the Mets. He he carved out an, an early connection with Mets fans. So maybe there's a same with McNeil. Maybe that's why it's they, the homegrown bull crap. Well, but I don't think it's I don't think it that is. It means oh, everybody, nothing. everybody, the fans love the homegrown guys. Who cares? I told you this. I don't care where they come from. Long Island, Staten Island, Jersey, New York City doesn't matter to me. Wherever you come, or whether you're from here, whether you're from a different country, I don't care. I want to see you produce. And Francisco Lindor has produced. Now, again, even you I think will... he's produced enough? Even because I... that's the that's the issue here. Sal. has Lindor? Let, let me frame it this way. I know my answer, and I think most Met fans who once they drop the act and they stop fighting back on social media and mm-hmm. well, Judge is hitting one twenty. Forget about that stuff. When when Met fans really look in the mirror and answer the question I'm about to answer you yeah. honestly, there's only one answer, and here's the question. Does Francisco Lindor impact winning enough? Well, they haven't won, so the answer would be no. So the answer is no. But, Hence yeah, the but, criticism. But, but then nobody else does on that team either. Has Pete Alonso? I think and it's, I'm not talking about you and I because we have criticized the core of this team. That's true. I'm talking about the majority of the people. Oh, and by the way, Francisco Lindor is accountable. He's the one that I've seen so far through four games saying, I've got to be better. The number two hitter's got to drive guys in. I've got to be better. Stand up, accountable, front and center in that clubhouse. Yep. I respect all those Me too. plays when he busts his finger in the door in Los yeah, Angeles. In LA, play He's next out day. there, wife having a baby. I was, all right, honey, I'll see you later. I'm going to go play yep. a ball game. Uh-huh. There's nothing not to love about Francisco Lindor. Now, I will say that, okay, did I think he was going to produce a little bit more? Maybe. And also, the the main thing, forget about even the numbers not being maybe what they were in Cleveland. Yep. He's got to do it from start to finish of a year. That's, That's the whole point. Oh, no, but it's not the whole point because the numbers are there. Where McNeil sucks. What did Jeff McNeil do a year ago? Jeff McNeil's batting title was an aberration. Plus, he's not accountable. Plus, he's a little bit of a baby throwing down the helmet and all that stuff. You know, other teams obviously calling him out for that. All those different things. McNeil as a player is just not on the on the level of Francisco Lindor. Yet, Nimmo, McNeil, Alonzo held to a different center because they're homegrown guys. And everybody rips Francisco Lindor, who to me is by far their best player and should be a leader in that clubhouse, if not the leader, along with Brandon Nimmo. Those two guys, to me, show the captain traits, but for some reason, they're not allowed to take that. I just feel like Lindor is getting unnecessary yeah. criticism yet again I, four I, games I, in. Sal, it's, it's, to me, he's earned it. And it's it's a fine line because you're right, the numbers are there. When you go to baseball reference, although they're not quite what they were at the Guardians, and we, we know that, his career has been borderline outstanding, certainly for the position that he plays, but to me... The numbers, number one, are not commensurate with the contract. He should produce more. But I think even more specifically, the numbers are hollow in the sense that, yeah, in totality, wow, 30-30 Lindor, fantastic. Well, great. What did Lindor do a year ago when the season was being defined? I'm not talking about say August when he hit 305 no, and they, the Mets are buried and it's over. They needed him in June. I'm talking about April when he came out and he hit 218. I'm talking about May when he hit 227. And most specifically, when the Mets were drowning, he hit 230 and it was a soft 230 in June and the Mets season was over. Now, there were other culprits. I'm not saying it's just him, but this is nothing new. Like this Are goes you... back. This goes back to you know we reference Mike and Chris. This goes back to the essence of WFAN. When you have a massive contract and you don't produce, you get heat. And I don't care how early he shows up. Great, Lindor's in spring training two weeks early, working with Vientos on yep. ground balls. Fantastic. I think that's a. And I'm not. I'm not mocking this. I'm, I'm not being facetious. Not dancing at concerts. He's there trying right. to be a ball player. Yeah, Alonzo and well, McNeil just, were both there. But they, okay. and I and I do appreciate that. That's an outward sign of of leadership. And he's invested. He's engaged. He is accountable. I do like that about Lindor. But be better. Are you holding him to a higher standard because he is the best player on the team? Yes. Okay, and that's fair enough. Yes. I understand that. I hold him to a high standard as well. I don't even get into the McNeil, McNeil stuff because he signed, what, a four-year deal. Right. He's a singles hitter. The Mets want to get rid of him tomorrow. They could. Right, but they me- can't get rid of Lindor because no one's taking on that contract. Uh, understood. But meanwhile, McNeil was batting cleanup a couple of times this year. And now he went from cleanup when I already told him. They listened to me on the Viento stuff. I'm not saying they literally listened to me. But, but they, they but, listened to but, the show. But you eventually, know Viento's didn't make the team. Told mm-hmm. you he stunk. You'd have to find out. I've been yelling and screaming, McNeil's not a, lead, a cleanup hitter. Yet they haven't cleared up. Now where he is today, he's seventh. 
behind even Brett Beatty in that lineup. So it took them four games to get smart to it, but now they're realizing, oh, maybe, maybe this guy isn't as good. Look at Jeff McNeil's career. Inconsistent. I'm not trying to pick on McNeil. I, it's nothing personal. Mm -hmm. I'm going based off of performance. Their core isn't good enough. I feel like Lindor gets the bulk of the blame. Can't do anything with Pete. Can't touch Pete. Can't even say a bad word about him. He's got to be here. Oh, no, McNeil. How dare you say anything about Jeff McNeil? Love the uh, dirt dog Jeff McNeil, the squirrel and all that stuff. Batting champion. Brandon Nimmo, homegrown. Oh, hustle all that stuff. And I like Nimmo, too. Those guys haven't produced. They are at more of a fault than Lindor, who the last two seasons, after his first slow season in New York, trying to get acclimated. And by the way, he didn't adjust well because he couldn't understand the booze. He didn't understand the New York market. I don't think it was until Buck Showalter alerted him. Yes. Hey, everybody yes. wants to cheer from you. He you was just good. Gotta, yep. yep, that's he, true. He changed a little bit there. Yeah, so, and he got better his second well, and third year. Uh, uh, Sal, maybe, I know we want to get these calls. People yeah. are revved up, ready to go. We'll get them. I swear, we'll get them right here. But maybe Met fans need to wake up, and maybe they need to expand and their level of criticism. I do think you're partially right. I do think that there's this insulation, this this protective bubble, not on this show, because I think we've right. been very honest with the Alonzo stuff and, and everything, really. But, you know, Pete gets a little protected. Yeah, Nemo, scrappy guy. We love Nemo. Oh, McNeil, batting title. Right. I, I, I'm with you on that. It's not equitable. But it's not equitable for him because Lindor, there's got to be a higher standard. He came here, and he was billed as a superstar. Whether or not he got screwed with the gold glove, got screwed with the yep. All-Star game. It's year four. He's won nothing. He's done nothing early in seasons when seasons are being defined, and he's yet to make an All-Star team. Facts. BT and Sal on the fan are friends at Town Fair Tire. Remind you that at Town Fair Tire, you always get the guaranteed lowest price on name brand tires from Connecticut to Maine. Nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody. Angelo is in Howard Beach. What's up, Angelo? Hey, good morning. I'd like to make three points if I can. Go ahead. First is perception is everything, Okay. When when McNeil strikes out or pops out, he looks like he wants to die. Okay, when when um. Who's that? The go my phone? Yeah, what's going on over there? What do you got? A burner phone? Name, well, I'm working. When uh, when Doyle strikes out, he smiles. I know it's just his his perception, but that's what you see. So it looks like one cares and one don't. The other point I'd like to make is, you keep right, saying there. that O'Neill sucks. 275. McNeil. Well, it's great these days. No, two, great no, these no days. it's not, Angelo, and thank you for the call. Look, McNeil, in comparison, doesn't live up to Francisco Lindor as a player. Like, not even close. Not even on that level. By the way, if I'm Francisco Lindor and they had that beef, now they could say that they're over it, but I think deep down we've referenced it. I don't think that they are over it. And then I'm, I'm Lindor and I'm like, this guy is getting all the love. He's not even close to the player that I am. He makes an all-star team. He wins a batting title. That is, it's, of course, Lindor's like, geez, is, can anything else go wrong for me here? It's just bad luck. Meanwhile, he's nowhere near the player that Francisco okay. Lindor is. If McNeil, this guy's saying that McNeil, oh, he hits 270. Yeah, if McNeil is 270, he's useless. He does nothing. He's got to hit 320 to even be worth keeping in the lineup at the bottom of the order. Mm -hmm. Well, all right, So what you said about Lindor and, and maybe, and we don't know, and I know you just kind of throw it out there and, and theorizing, but you know, like if Lindor looks at McNeil and and kind of views him the way Sal just described, which I which I can understand, and who knows if they resolve their beef? I do think that beefs can get resolved. It's not like you know people have issues and you have issues forever, depending upon what happened. Obviously, the severity of it. Right. I think that they're okay. I think they've got a decent working relationship. But while McNeil could look at uh, while Lindor could look at McNeil, McNeil could look at Lindor and say to himself, hey, "Dude, you're making thirty four million dollars a year. How about you hit more than one ninety in bet April?" You, I bet you he does. Okay, well, then he's not wrong. No, well, he's not wrong, but he's looking at, at the wrong thing. He should be looking in the mirror. Lindor's looking. Lindor's not looking at McNeil. Lindor knows he's better than Jeff McNeil. He's wondering why he is being scrutinized to the level he is by fans and media when he is producing, and yet everybody else, it's like, oh, we love this guy. Because he's the perceived best player. Is a difference, you know. Oh, it's the homegrown thing. Patrick I think that's Ewing the problem. versus... I think it's the homegrown thing, BT. Charles more so Smith. Than that. Oh, well, Charles Smith, not a good champ with the layups. Fans yeah. love the homegrown guys. Yeah, you, you're right I, about I'm going to give you that. Like, I think the contract combined with the homegrown guys. Hey. But look at Lindor's season. Like, the numbers are there. But the, but that is, I know they are. But it's he misleading. Been yeah, oh, it's miss. He should have been, would have been. Dude, 
It's year four. You think he's making the All Star team this year? And I'm not just going to rip. I do. I, I, do say, think I he's don't. Be I, and not just because well, of the four best games. I, in a game. I, I've been hearing that forever. Then show it. Yeah, well, he has. I mean, show it when it matters. Oh, well, that's a difference. Show it when. Listen, I know we'll get into the importance of today's games here, and I, I know it's baseball. There's a lot of games to go, but man, today is big for the Mets. Go out there, crank out three or four hits over the two games. Even if you only win one of the two, just wake up. And I hope he does. I don't want to see the Mets buried three weeks into the season. But I, where where I've jumped off. The Lindor train, and it was a while ago, The there's a hollow element to his numbers. I'm sorry. When the season's being defined, he's he's kind of small. Couldn't you say the same thing about Pete Alonso then? Yeah, you 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 could. That's why I don't think the Mets are very good. Right. Uh, I, I'm just saying. I, it, he could. Lindor gets he a lot could. more criticism than the other three. But don't you think, and I'm not disagreeing with that. And he's that, the best of the three. And I'm not like disagreeing with that either. To, if I had a pick to keep one, and I don't know what the Mets are going to do eventually. with If I had a pick to keep one of the four, yep. Nemo, Lindor, McNeil, Alonzo, I'm keeping Lindor. I probably would too because you can move him over to second base when when he gets a little bit too old and maybe loses some bounce at shortstop. He's a switcher. He could he could run. But I'm not, listen, I, I don't want to get too bogged down by the money. Uh, because my answer to that would be I would probably pick somebody else only because it opens up the Mets to do a lot more. Right. If you were getting, if you were to get rid of Lindor, which I know that they won't, so I don't want to really entertain that too much. But I think that there's always going to be a correlation and a connection. How much do you make? And that's the level of criticism, right or wrong. That's not a new rule in New York City. That's what we do forever. John is on Staten Island. What's up, John? Hi, hi guys. Long time listener, first time caller, oh. diehard Mets fan. All right, John. Uh, I, I totally agree with you, Sal. Uh, uh, Lindor is the best player in the Mets. You could bat that guy first, second, third, fourth. He's a manager's dream. Yeah, he started off slow. All right, but let's compare him. Who's the best player on the Yankees? No, 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 stop, no, 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 stop. No, 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 don't make it about the Yankees. No, no, no. What did he do the first six games? No, 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 no it's not, it's not, game seven. John, don't, John, you had me until on, the Yankees, John. thank you for the call, we're not trying yeah. to bring the Yankees into this, we'll get stop. to the Yankees. You don't think I got some tweets yesterday, because the, the video was pretty hot, that, that, that was put out with, with me and the Lindor stuff, when I was yelling about it yesterday, and I saw this a ton, I, I, I was, I, I actually leaned into a little bit, I didn't respond, I did look at some of the comments, they're like, oh, what's Judge doing? The point, which I think is ridiculous, and by the way, he had a home run and a double yesterday, so how's he doing? He's and he's going back to being Aaron Judge is how he's doing. Yeah, six and one. How are they doing? I mean, that, and that's the point. Like, if the Mets were winning right now, if they were three and one or even two and two, we're not having this conversation. But not the after Mets, four games. Not after four. But but Lindor, he does need to get off to a good start. He, yeah, and so far he's off to a horrendous start. He's got company: Nimmo, McNeil, mm-hmm. Bader. Outside of Marte, Beatty a little bit, Alvarez. Nobody else really doing anything. Uh, but the point is, is that. The Mets' margin for error is razor thin. They are not – if they start – I want to be somewhat fair. If they start the season – Seven and sixteen. Mm. Which, well, I don't know if that. I, I don't think that that's outlandish to think that that could happen. I don't even They're know if that's dead. realistic. They they are buried. It's over. They're done. They're not good enough to bounce back from that. So your best player, and we all agree it's Lindor. Make sure you don't start seven and sixteen by I don't know hitting in April. BT and Sal on the fan. More your calls on the other side. We'll get into the Yankees a little bit later on. We're talking Mets. We'll have Sergeant Slaughter coming up oh. in studio next hour as well. We're, I'm going to have to put, have him put you in the camel clu- the uh, Cobra clutch yeah, yeah, yeah. for the way you're talking about my guy Lindor. We'll do Mets. Mets obviously have a double dip starting at, what, 12-10, I think, first pitch. So we'll be taking Mets calls up until then. 877-337-6666. BT and Sal on the fan. The 